everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the third part of my Bunurong Cemetery mystery series. <laughs> so this has been a little bit of an ongoing series. I really only meant it to be one video initially, but it's been this sort of ongoing mystery that I've been trying to solve. So if you haven't already seen the first two parts, I'll link them above for you to watch. But I'll also just give you a really quick rundown just in case you're a bit rusty. So initially I was going to do a video about Botany Cemetery, so I did a little bit of a walk around and vlog there. But while I was there I got really interested in the Pioneer Memorial Park that is at Botany Cemetery. So it's just a small section of the cemetery that's dedicated to the earliest graves of um, Sydney. So there are headstones there dating back to the early 1800s, to the really earliest days of the colony. And there's a lot of important people also in there, people who were uh, convicts. There was the guy who first started the Sydney Gazette, the first newspaper in Australia. And there's plenty of others. You can just look into it. If you Google it, you'll find um, lots of information. So those people were originally buried at the old Sydney burial ground, which is now Sydney Town Hall. So they were moved from there to the Devonshire Street Cemetery first to make way for the town hall. And then back in 1901, they decided to build Sydney Central Railway Station at the Devonshire Street Cemetery site. So the government put out notices and anyone who had relatives buried there could contact the government and arrange to have their bodies relocated. And then what they decided was that any remains that weren't claimed would be moved to this purpose-built cemetery called Bunurong Cemetery. It was put out in the far outskirts of Sydney where they never thought, you know, any building would ever sort of happen. But here we are and now it's a very built-up suburban area. So at the time, back in 1901, a lot of people did uh, arrange to have bodies moved and they were moved to Rookwood and to Waverley and to other local cemeteries but there was quite a lot that was still unclaimed or people who decided that they wanted them to be moved to Bunurong. So I think it was around 15,000 remains in the end. Better go back and double check that figure, I'm not sure, but I think it was around 15,000 remains and headstones were to be moved to Bunurong Cemetery. So that all occurred back in 1901. The remains and headstones were moved and Central Railway Station was built. So then the really strange thing occurred in the 1960s when the Bunurong Cemetery, which was by then in a real state of neglect, um, and it was adjoining Botany Cemetery, and Botany Cemetery um, wanted to expand. So they applied to the government to, to move all of the graves from Bunurong into a smaller sort of section and call that the Pioneer Memorial Park and then they could expand. But Botany Cemetery says that when they went to survey the land that they found that there was actually no burials there. There were just headstones. So, <clears throat> so the mystery arose, or at least it arose for me. Nobody else seems to be asking this question, but where are those thousands of remains that were supposed to be at Bunurong Cemetery? So in my last video, I was particularly interested in a body that was found when they were working on the Sydney Metro. They found the remains of a person and there was also part of the um, inscription as well next to him. So they actually knew who the person was. And because of that, you could actually trace where the guy should have been. And once again, the media didn't really do this. They were just like, oh, cool, a body under the station. That's really weird. But the reinterment index is actually available on the State Archives website. So I went and had a look at this guy. I looked up his name and he was one of the ones that was supposed to be at Bunurong Cemetery. So what was he doing underneath Central Station? So that really led me to question whether the bodies had ever been moved at all. In the first video, I kind of had a few theories. I sort of was like, maybe the bodies are still under Central Station, but I also questioned whether Botany Cemetery could have been lying. Now, I only thought this could have been in their interests because Botany Cemetery wanted to expand and they wanted to make money. So 
it was in their interest to be able to um, sweep aside the remains from Bunurong Cemetery. So I sort of wondered if they'd told a bit of a fib so that they could use the land. But once they found those remains underneath Central, along with his name that sort of verifies he wasn't just sort of one straggler who was left behind, this was somebody who was actually supposed to be at Bunurong. That made me think, well, perhaps everyone was left behind and they only moved the headstones. But that is such a scandal, right? So back in 1901, the Department of Public Works were in charge of moving all of the graves. That included both headstones and remains and coffins and anything else. So when they built Central Railway Station, they claimed that the ground was completely clear. So that implies really that there was some sort of shady government sort of cover up back in 1901. So despite all of my theories, I didn't really have any firm evidence as to who was lying. Was it the Public Works Department back in 1901? Or was it the Botany Cemetery Trust in the 1960s? So I recently decided to go on a little trip out to state archives because they still had some more paperwork that was from 1901 and some from the 60s and 70s as well. So I thought if I dig through this material, maybe I'll find something that really gives me a clear answer. But the majority of paperwork wasn't really of much help. So first I looked through some volumes that were basically the forms that had been sort of filled out. So back in 1901, the government had sent uh, out that sort of notice and there was all of the paperwork for every single person who had contacted the government to arrange for their family or friends remains to be moved. So they had letter upon letter upon letter. There was loads of correspondence about people inquiring about where their relatives were and where they were going to be moved to. And there were even some disputes over <laughs> who was going to be moved where. <laughs> but it really didn't give me that sort of smoking gun that I was looking for. There were plenty of people who were supposed to be moved to Bunurong Cemetery and there was lots of paperwork to back that up. But there was nothing to indicate that they ever weren't moved. I did actually find an interesting letter that was from Frank Kloon. He was a writer and he wrote loads of books, but I haven't read any of them. Uh, but he actually contacted the government because he, back in the 1960s, was looking for the grave of George Howe. So George Howe was the founder of the Sydney Gazette and Kloon was saying that the graves were in such disrepair and such poor order that he couldn't find Howe's grave. And he sort of said that, you know, these are Sydney's earliest pioneers. Why, you know, is the cemetery in such disrepair and where are their remains? So I don't know if he was kind of barking up the same tree as me, but I couldn't find any kind of like response or resolution to that letter. And I haven't been able to get a hold of Clune's book, which was about Botany Bay. Um, I don't think it's probably going to give me what I want. I think he was probably just following up what became of some of the sort of famous pioneers. But I would be curious if anyone has a copy of it or if anyone can find a copy of it just in case it has anything. So that was about all that State Archives gave me. I had to go and check just in case there was anything, but it really didn't like answer that burning question as to who was lying. So I also did a little bit more digging through newspaper articles and I did find some more articles from the time and they sort of wrapped it up implying that it was completed. So the earlier news articles back in 1901 did tend to say that there was some issues with the grave removals, that some of the workmen hadn't been paid and there were some strikes and there were some problems. But the articles from 1902 all very strongly indicated that the work had been completed, that the remains had all been moved along with the headstones and everyone was in their new sort of resting places. So they also talked about the trams that had been running from the Devonshire Street Cemetery out to Bunurong Cemetery carrying headstones, carrying coffins, carrying remains. So really the media, like, it really looks like everything was removed out to Bunurong. It really looks clear cut. It doesn't look like there was any question that everything was done according to plan. 
Now one like little odd thing that I noticed was that there were a few articles that pointed to the minister who was in charge of the public works saying that he had saved a lot of money on this move. He sort of boasted that he'd managed to save the government £50,000 in the sort of moving costs. I don't know how he claims to have done that because it never goes into detail. It just sort of says that he had saved this huge expense. And so it only just made me question, did he save the money by sort of taking some shortcuts? I don't know. Like, I couldn't find anything more about that. It just sort of there's just a run of articles saying that he saved £50,000, which is a lot of money. There was also a mention of an Act of Parliament, some legislation from 1901, but I also haven't been able to get my hands on exactly what that refers to. So it's something else that I need to try to get down the track. And the last but by no means least thing that I wanted to mention today was some amazing evidence that I've received and that is a first-hand account of somebody who was there back in the 1970s. So when Botany Cemetery had taken control and was moving the graves from Bunurong Cemetery up into the Pioneer Memorial Park. My amazing source is the local stonemason, Mr. McDermott, and I really, really, really appreciate his input because he actually remembers what happened back in the 1970s and I didn't think that I was going to get any kind of first-hand account like this so I am so appreciative thank you so much anyway his memory is that the headstones were moved by a government sort of work scheme at the time so they had uh, so the government allocated sort of a bunch of workers that were part of a sort of I think it was sort of an equivalent of a work for the doll type scheme, sort of unemployed people to go and move those headstones. So I guess they just wanted some cheap labour. But Mr McDermott remembers only headstones and no remains. So, so when I say that I don't mean that he forgets about the remains, I mean he remembers it as being there were no remains, just headstones to be moved. <clears throat> In combination with what I learned from Bonnie Cemetery Trust, which existed at the time, they claimed that the ground was so hard that it had to be jackhammered through, so there couldn't have been any coffins there to begin with anyway. So I didn't really believe Botany Cemetery Trust. I was a little bit suspicious of them because money-wise, I thought that they were up to no good. <laughs> but Mr. McDermott doesn't have such um, affiliation. He, um, to him as a local stonemason, it wouldn't have really mattered whether there were remains or not. So the combination of his memory being that there were no bodies there and the person being dug up underneath Central Station, to me that combines to suggest that those bodies were never moved. So all of those headstones back in 1901 were moved. Um, I think that the minister at the time did his cost cutting by somehow managing to sweep those remains under the rug. That's a lot of remains though. It was supposedly in the sort of tens of thousands. So. And they were important remains, like, these were people that back in 1901 there was concern about. Like, there were sort of letters into the newspaper and small articles about particular graves, particular people who were buried there, that people were concerned, oh, this is a prominent person, this is a famous person, we can't just let this grave sort of disappear or whatever. And some of those headstones are in the Pioneer Memorial Park, so they were clearly separated from their bodies despite sort of public concern about them. So I think that maybe the minister back in 1901 was a bit shady, like <laughs> I'm just trying to... I think it's going to be really hard to get that evidence though because obviously anyone who would have been around then in 1901 isn't going to be alive now. So that only leaves the memories of the 1960s and 70s, of which I now have a first-hand source. Thank you again. So I feel like that almost wraps this mystery. It tells me that while the headstones are at Bunurong Cemetery, the remains have been left under Central Station. And nobody really talks about this because 
everyone sort of indicates that yeah central station used to be a, a cemetery the bodies aren't there anymore but they are or at least it really strongly looks like that's where they are i mean unless when he dug them up he sort of gathered them all together and dumped them somewhere but that would have been much harder for him to get away with surely so my thought is that those bodies must all still be underneath central station and if so i feel like there should be maybe some sort of like memorial or something down there like maybe a um like a plaque or something with some of the names and some of the stories because like i've said before these are some of sydney's most prominent early sort of colonial settlers um some of the names would be familiar to people now who are sort of interested in australian history and it's such a shame that they've been kind of disrespected like this moving their headstones without their remains and then and then when botany cemetery just sort of swept all those headstones up into a little corner it just all feels very sort of disrespectful like i said it's just a shame um one more thing that mr mcdermott wanted people to know and i 100 percent agree with this one is that the graves are falling into disrepair so sorry not the graves the headstones so the headstones are just outside so they're in the weather they are sandstone and some of them are already practically illegible back when they moved all of the headstones they actually got rid of hundreds of them that they said were illegible at the time but now a lot of the current ones are becoming that way so the weather's getting to them the chemicals in the air like everything is deteriorating he said that the wind and the ground movement are all sort of affecting these gravestones he suggested that the headstones could use abutment braces or retaining walls to potentially help keep them in position and the headstones are actually heritage listed so really they should be protected um these are completely irreplaceable these are some of sydney's absolute earliest examples of sort of stone masonry and and headstones on top of them being particularly interesting sort of prominent historical figures so for starters i would encourage you to go and just check out those headstones in person but also if there's anything that can be done like perhaps you could like perhaps contacting the local council or the department of environment and heritage and sort of voicing your concerns that these historical monuments are just sort of being left to decay if they're not protected then they really won't be there for future generations i'd say that it's kind of being left to eastern suburbs memorial park and the probably Randwick Council to look after them but clearly they're not really doing enough. Being that they are heritage listed really they have a lot more responsibility and they should be doing more to protect them and it's also possible to try to create some sort of shelter for them like maybe almost make like a pavilion or something that was suggested back in the 60s when they moved them um, but it was never sort of built but it's another possibility to keep them out of the elements they're absolutely stunning sort of pieces of work i was really amazed at how beautiful they were when i went out there and i do think it's a huge shame that the remains weren't moved with them because they'd be so much more meaningful if they were attached to the person of whom they're like speaking but yeah i think that's about it for this video i will still continue to look into this one because one i'm still curious as to how the minister back in 1901 got away with this one Thank you.